Well, how's it going everyone? Bo here from BZ Up. We're playing the Hunter Call of the Wild today, starting off a new playthrough in 2022. Really excited about it. Um, and, uh, and in this, I just really want to get into the game and we'll just start uh, talking about different, uh, different things you should probably be thinking about. Uh, yes, we're going to delete everything. I know it's a big deal, big deal, but that's uh, that's just part of who I am. We have lots of options in 2022. We got lots of different places we can start out. We have uh, well, we have Remy Warren. Other than that, everything's pretty similar on the uh, character front. Um, but I will say, um, when thinking about somewhere you can start in. Uh, in 2022 there are a few different places that you might uh consider obviously you have hirschfelden and leighton lake district which are two of the starting areas that we uh first started the game with in 2017 but today we actually have rancho del arroyo which is really an awesome place to start out as far as whether you're starting weapons and what you have available to you and the animals you're going to be able to hunt with full integrity rancho del arroyo is going to be perfect so i think uh after thinking about it for a while rancho del arroyo is where i'm going to start out with this playthrough we're going to be able to go after the deer we're going to be able to go after the javelina the coyotes um the pheasants even with uh with the weapons we have available to us at level one and so i really think this is going to be a great starting area plus i haven't been able to do the missions yet so i'm Welcome excited Rancho del Arroyo. Your flight was okay. Can I get you? Kill on that sleepy head. It's time to get to work. If you want to head out and work off last night's carne asada, do me the honor of officially opening this outpost first, huh? I know, it's a mess. I took my own stuff, but nobody's volunteered to come pick up the family's things yet. So, look all you want, but don't touch. <laughs> my mom would come over and hit me with her flip-flop if I so much as hinted that someone had been rummaging around. <laughs> uh, family, you know? Anyway. Settling. All right, top notch. Well, that's uh, that's the beginning of that for us. The Underdogs by Mariano Azuela. It's about the revolution. My bisabuelo Javier used to complain that Azuela had gone in it all wrong. <laughs> and I should know I was there. <laughs> but he must have read it cover to cover at 20 times. This is a cool area, honestly, but uh... Yeah, it's interesting how much stuff is covered up with uh, cloths and stuff. You have to think at that point that it must be part of the uh, storyline to uncover everything. That's a really pretty place. No one's really been in here much since my bisabuelo. Uh, that's my great-grandfather, since he died. So we have a key here. <laughs> For what? I don't know. That was my great-grandfather Javier's. I swear, that man used to take the damn thing into the bathroom with him. He was a vaquero through and through. Este... Hey, uh, I don't mean to stress you out or anything, but this isn't quite what I meant by scouting the place out. Ah, that's a soldadera's hat. A woman revolutionary. My sister borrowed it for the centenary celebrations in Mexico City a few years ago. Let no one tell you Mexican women are afraid to do the dirty work. <laughs> my abuela insisted on the cross. At least we managed to convince her that one was enough. Huh? Well, you're, um, you're thorough. I'll give you that. <laughs> Top notch. All right. Well, with that out of the way, we can take a look at our inventory. We're starting out in 2022 with the uh, Ranger 243 uh, rifle, bolt action, the uh, over and under Caversham Steward 12 gauge and the Focus 0357 revolver. Got a bit of ammo for all of them. We're also starting with a roe deer collar, which we don't need here, uh, predator jackrabbit collar, and deer bleat uh, collar for the, pretty much all the deer we're gonna find here. We actually start out with 50 cent eliminator, which is kind of uh, surprising. When we started out back in the day, uh, cent eliminator was something you needed to like unlock um, as time went on. So yeah, a little bit surprising that we're starting out with uh, 
level one but that's all right let's uh let's move forward to the lookout tower maybe we'll see some animals along the way basically as we're traveling around here what you should really be looking for are uh one animals of course but two uh you should be looking for need zones any sort of tracks on the ground uh that might tell you like animals travel through here or animals gather here these are things that you should be looking for and uh getting on your map because as you're traveling along in the future uh you know you're trying to think of oh where am i going to find white tailed deer where am i going to find pheasants in the future um that is really going to give you something to look at on your map and go okay this is where they are this is where they collect and a lot of people uh say that this isn't realistic this isn't the way uh you know hunting really is in real life and that's that's not really so um you know you look at fields here in kansas for instance here we have a Mexican bobcat making some noise. You look at fields here in Kansas, um, you look at watering holes in Africa and stuff like that. These are places that animals gather. Uh, you know, this is where they, they stick out in the mornings. There's a reason that uh, when you think of going, you know, turkey hunting in Kansas, for, for instance, uh, you might uh, go out on the edge of a field uh, and set up some decoys early in the morning or late at night. I mean, those are, those are your need zones, uh, essentially. And just like you remember those need zones uh, in real life, in this game you are writing them down on a map so that you remember where the animals like to gather in the future. Alright, we found some tracks. Ooh, actually turkey tracks. How about that? That's surprising. We saw the uh, bobcat making noise and thought, hey look at that. Turkey right over here. do have a shotgun. The only problem we would be uh, looking at here is that I do not have a turkey call to call them in closer. So we might have to uh, might have to say adios to this uh, turkey for right now. But it would be cool to go after them in the future. So like I was mentioning, if you see right here, you have this feed zone icon, which is just a leaf, basically telling us that turkeys like to gather here and eat, whether that be some grains or maybe some grasshoppers or bugs that they like in the area. Uh, this is a place that the turkeys like to, every single day, come back to and search for food. And just like in real life, you might think, oh, well, the turkeys like to come to this certain field around 7 to 11 or, uh, you know, sometime in the morning. Um, so this is gonna be great. You, every day when you uh, go to sleep, look at that, we got another one flying over us. I spooked him out, I guess. Um, every day when we're looking for a place to hunt turkeys, we'll come back here and uh, we should be able to find one. Oh my gosh, there are a bunch of them, but unfortunately, I think we uh, might have scared them away a little bit. Says they're traveling because we don't have a high enough skill yet to actually see um, what they're reaction is at the moment but obviously they're fleeing um running away they've been alerted to our presence and really um you know if we we're a max level character that might not have been the case but at level one um unfortunately unfortunately we're uh about as quiet as a toddler with a bunch of pots and pans so we're gonna go ahead and just run over to the scout the scouting tower um and just get that for the mission and uh and maybe if we see some deer along the way or perhaps a bobcat or something which we did here then we might be able to get one of those instead oh we actually got our first mating call from a white-tailed deer right on so we've heard turkeys we've heard pheasants we've heard coyotes and uh that's our first sign of a deer so my goodness this is why this uh this map is going to be a great option for starting players because everything we've heard so far can be taken out with the starting weaponry. You know, if you're running around Leighton Lake or uh, Hirschfelden and you run into a red deer or a uh, bison or something like that, or uh, or an elk or a moose or something, um, those are animals that you really can't take down with the 243 or the 12 gauge. Um, so, though I guess technically you could get slugs at some point and maybe go after them with the 12 gauge, but starting out, it's gonna be much easier to take out coyotes and turkeys and pheasants and, and, and deer with the 243 and shotgun. So, uh, that's why I thought this would be a great, great place. Running up the spotting tower here. Decorations inside. Looks captivating, no? Except a lot of the problem with ranches like this one is what you can't see. We've sucked up so much of the groundwater for cattle that areas that used to be wetlands are turning arid year round. 
The grasslands are mostly buffalo grass. It's an introduced species that smothers native plants. Likes to catch fire, too. I once saw a saguaro, you know, one of those classic cactus plants, surrounded by buffalo grass, burst into flames. It was one of the kicks in the rear I needed to finally sell off the last of our cattle. Anyway, take the time to explore the ranch in your downtime, too. If even half of what I heard growing up is true, <laughs> there is plenty waiting out there. So, while I'm stuck waiting for someone, they, they said less than a minute, but out here that means at least five, or probably more like 20. <laughs> anyway, you're here to evaluate the facilities, but there are a few things I need you to take care of first. I'll make it worth your while, of course. First up, the cattle may be gone, but there's still some fencing left. There should be a pair of fencing pliers on the countertop in the Hacienda's kitchen. All right, we've been put on a mission to go get some pliers and remove some fencing. Now, we did hear deer as we were walking towards the tower and uh, looking off from the spotting tower, obviously. I mean, this is a great opportunity to look around and see if you can see any animals uh, about. We just caught the glimpse of a white-tailed deer uh, drinking or feeding on the side of this lake over here. So I figured this would be a great opportunity to... Uh, to hunt something on our way back to uh, get those pliers. Now, obviously, the missions of the Hunter Call of the Wild are completely optional. Um, you can hunt around as much as you want, but I will say, after a while, after you've experienced all the hunting of animals in the game, uh, it is kind of nice to take a break and actually do some missions, just, just to do something... Um, out of the norm, I suppose, and you might actually get into some places that you didn't uh, you didn't actually come across as you were just hunting around looking for animals. Our map is not as dark as it once was. We can actually see this entire area around here has been lit up, and uh, and we can actually see uh, different points of uh, interest around here. Now these could be just uh, interesting uh, details of the map that could give us some uh, some. Uh, experience or you can actually see that we have a, uh, a new outpost available here that we can uh, pick up as well and talking about need zones again you can see how we have our turkey need zone we have our ringneck pheasant and we have our white-tailed deer drinking need zone here so you can actually see now uh, just going off of these need zones that these are areas um, that animals will be at you can tell just by the time of day any time that you're playing this game Whether it be in the morning like uh, like right now or later on in the evening You can get an idea of where to look for animals So if you're interested in finding white-tailed deer uh, you might want to sleep or just go straight to 830 uh, Or around there or 11 to 11 o'clock and then you can actually look around uh, Watering holes like this one this lake here and uh, look for white-tailed deer. Oh, there we go. And finally see them. It's actually a decent buck there. Level two, and there's actually another buck right next to him. I say, I say, let's just go ahead and get a deer on the ground, everyone. Oh, I will say, another thing that you should remember is that if you go to your map now, now that you've shot a deer, you should see this big purple splotch. Now, I believe, I believe, uh, after you've shot four animals in the same area say we shot every single deer out of this herd this would be a very bright pink color and really what that means is that the animals have been scared beyond belief and they've actually left this this area for good they're never gonna return back here it's just every time they think about it it brings back bad memories and they're never gonna go back to this a little uh, watering uh, drinking area right here um, and your need zone that area that tells you oh this is where the deer like to gather that will actually be deleted and then you won't be able to come back here and hunt them ever again so eventually this need zone will pop up somewhere else maybe it will be down here for instance um, just just totally random honestly um, but it is a good thing to remember because you don't want to be collecting a bunch of need zones and, and kind of getting an idea of where animals like to gather and then all of a sudden just deleting them and then and then you're back to square one trying to figure out where they are again Let's see if he's gonna give us a good shot here In danger of hitting the shoulder blade but we might be able to get lucky and go for either a heart shot or ah! Hey, 
hey, check that out. Might be able to go for a lung shot too, but that was all right. What did we manage? Oh, so we did end up hitting, I was trying to avoid the shoulder blade, but we ended up hitting a bone in the arm anyway. Gosh darn it, right on the end, right on the corner. Um, so pretty cool there. You can actually, this is a great opportunity when you're looking at your shots. You can kind of switch back and forth between the skeletal structure and uh, looking at it there so that you can kind of think, okay, if I'm shooting this shot again, I can pretty much continue aiming for that, uh, that tricep up here. And that will uh, completely miss the shoulder blade and the bone. Now, I uh, also could have shot right on the inside of uh, where the neck meets the uh, shoulder. And that could have possibly just barely missed this bone and gone to the lung. You just kind of have to kind of think about the penetration of your bullet. Obviously, we're using soft points right now. Um, there's two types of bullets in the game. Uh, for the most part, there's soft points and there's uh, polymer tips. Now, sometimes this will uh, switch to hollow points which are going to uh, have even less penetration. But the soft points are there to uh, deal a lot of damage, basically. Uh, good expansion, very poor penetration, versus the polymer points, polymer tips, I should say, uh, have great penetration, they just don't expand very fast, so your animal might run a bit more. Get the 357 out, get a uh, shot on with this. Cool. All right, well, I took a chancy second shot, but it didn't work out for me. <laughs> yeah. I was walking back and I was starting to notice that there was uh, some dots out in this field and we can actually see that the turkeys are back in this area. We might actually uh, kind of work our way up there and see if we can work in a shot even still without the turkey call. Honestly, we could probably pull up a shot right here. Look at that. Two, two down. Improper ammo. Oh no, we didn't have uh, we didn't have bird shot in. Oh, so that's interesting. That's a good thing to remember, I should say. <laughs> we got a bullet in the skull as well as in the lung. Well, God, we shot him with a buckshot. Of course, they're gonna die. All right, well, we're taking our first look at the store here. This is where you're going to be able to see all the weapons in the game, what's available to you. Uh, you can actually see a lot of the, the DLC weapons, and being 2022, the new Zarza Modern Rifle Pack just came out. Uh, so we would be able to use all of these. And I will say that uh, we will be able to use the 223 once we get a rifle score of 280. And at that point... I am going to be fine with using the, uh, the Zars of 15, 223, Midnight. Um, I'm going to be fine using that uh, instead of the 223. The 223 itself just doesn't do a ton of damage. Um, so I think it's fine to use this uh, modern, modern 223. I think it's a cool rifle. But we'll hold off from using the 308 until we unlock like the, uh, the 7mm, for instance as well as weapons like the M1. Uh, these are all very strong weapons for early on. It kind of ruins the experience. I mean, if you're really, if you're really hurting and you really want to use uh, one of them to go after a red deer or an elk or something like that, feel free. Obviously, it's a game. Just do what you want. But, uh, you know, maybe we could use the, the 50 cal uh, uh, flintlock. I don't see how that's going to be a real advantage. Uh, but for the most part, we're going to be uh, keeping keep into uh, how this game is kind of designed to allow you to use animals as your uh, skill goes up. You can see the same thing with the handguns here. Um, actually got some pretty cool handguns added to the game with the recent update, so they are pretty cool. This is actually the fifth anniversary uh, edition of the 454 revolver, and it's it's absolutely beautiful. Very cool, free, uh, free little uh, sidearm they've added to the game. Ooh, the gamekeeper. I like that. That's cool. I like the I like the over and under design, but the one thing I don't really enjoy about the Caversham is the rail. I don't enjoy the rail, and then this one might have the rail as well, but uh, I don't enjoy the rail look um, on the uh, Caversham. I actually enjoy using the uh, the the uh, side by sides a lot. I think that it's a, a great shotgun to use, and we can take a look at the different bows in the game. Uh, you're going to have the long bow, go ahead and go out there traditional style. They actually will have recurves as well that aim very similar. And then they have the more uh, modern crossbows and the, uh, the compound bows as well. Now when it comes to rifle sights, these are also controlled by your rifle score. So it just shows you how important getting uh, your rifle score up if you want to use uh, 
scopes and whatnot. But uh, obviously, you know, shotgun sights, handgun sights, bow sights, these are all controlled by those particular skills as well. Now, if we look at collars, these are actually controlled by your player level. Um, you know, your player is going to have to uh, gain level to use some of these calls, um, which is kind of controlled by, you know, how effective they are and as well as, uh, you know, what level you should really be hunting these animals, you know, it's going to be a while before you're hunting moose, you know, you're going to have to have that rifle skill up there to get a large enough uh, caliber weapon to go after a moose, so level 35 is when you're going to unlock that. It's just kind of little things like that that kind of give you an idea of kind of what the game, the developers were picturing you hunting these animals. Now let's go over backpacks real quick. In the game, you're going to be playing and you're going to realize that you're not able to carry as, you know, as much stuff as you'd possibly like to be carrying, and if we go to storage here, we'll actually be able to see what we are carrying you can go to total carrying capacity and see that we're carrying 12 pounds out of a possible 20. now if we go to our character we'll actually see that you can equip a backpack right here and this backpack is going to increase your total carrying capacity of all the stuff that you can bring with you but as you bring uh, a backpack with you, you obviously your character is going to have more stuff on you're going to move around um you know um, not so much slower but you're going to have a bigger body you know animals are going to see you a bit faster you're also going to create more noise as you're traveling so you kind of have to find a good uh, balance between carrying more stuff and also being quieter and not you know being so easy to see there's also other outfits that you can wear depending upon what DLCs you have like I said uh, these camos really don't do anything in the game they uh, don't make you harder to see or anything like that but if you uh, want to wear the Remy Warren camo or perhaps a ghillie suit or something like that feel free as you go on and you start you know hunting on other maps you're also going to unlock other uh, map specific outfits and stuff like that that are really cool um, just something to look forward to I suppose and as you can see right here in the kennel you can actually uh, get one of your dogs you know you can get get your uh, get your bloodhound that you really want to hunt with and I think we will in the first episode here go ahead and do that you can name your dog of course we're always naming our dog Bjorn too Ooh. Let's go ahead and do that. And we've got our first dog. Now, if you do have the uh, 4x4 DLC, you can also spawn a uh, 4x4. We'll go ahead and do that just to show you. I see him on the map. There he is. Get over here, Bjorn2. <laughs> there we go. Everyone has been looking forward to that moment right there <laughs> for a long time. Uh, we should be seeing more dogs added to the Hunter Call of the Wild in the future, but the Bloodhound, uh, similar to Hunter Classic, first dog we see in the game, so pretty awesome. He's a great companion, gives you someone to hang out with as you're playing single player and doing these missions, um, and will try to keep up with you as you're uh, speeding on by on a nice quad bike like this. But everyone, I think that's going to do it for episode one. We're going to try to keep it kind of... Uh, kind of short I know that we've been over a lot of different stuff we have a lot of material that that I need to edit and we've uh, we've hunted whitetail we've hunted turkeys we've seen uh, some coyotes and signs of pheasants and I know that in the future here in uh, Rancho del Arroyo we're definitely gonna be hunting them so look forward to that in the future if you want to see more videos from this or from me make sure you hit that subscribe button and if you enjoyed the video or found it helpful in any way hit that like you really appreciate it everyone check us out every Monday Wednesday 7 30 to 9 30 p.m. Central where you can uh See us playing different games, your favorite hunting and fishing games out there, everyone. Should be a great time hanging out with the community and playing these awesome games. And if you have any questions or you have anything uh, you want to see, make sure you comment it down below. Love to see all the different uh, comments and stuff from everyone out there. But until next time, everyone, take care. And remember, everyone, we're one planet, one family, game on.